Have you ever had a day where it just felt like you could do anything, you could conquer the world, you could do anything, be anything? And then maybe there's days where you just felt like doing nothing. You didn't want to open the emails, you didn't want to make the phone calls, you didn't want to put in those offers or do whatever it is that you had to do. What makes the difference between those days? Because when you can identify that, you can now use that to your advantage to create financial freedom at an accelerated rate. My name is Joe Moffitt with Master Life by Design and today's video is how to manage your state to create financial freedom. All right, so I know a lot of you guys are probably like, what is state and why is it so important? Let me break it down simply for you. Your state or your emotional state is the emotions that you're experiencing on a consistent basis. How many of us actually know that your emotions drive you to either go do something or not do something? To go you know, put in that offer or not put in that offer? To make that phone call or not make that phone call? Your state determines whether you take action or not, right? There's two twin forces pain and pleasure, and depending on the emotional state you're in in that moment will determine whether you experience or associate pain or pleasure to that current activity. Now, imagine if you felt invisible, you felt like you were extremely confident. Imagine every day for you know 15 hours a day you felt that way, day in, day out, week in, week out, year in, year out. Where do you think you would be in your life, your business, your financial pet freedom path? Where do you think you would be? Do you think it would happen a lot faster or a lot slower, right? Obviously faster. Now, if you're living in fear, do you think that you're going to every day, if you live every day, every week, month, and year in fear, do you think you're gonna make certain decisions that's gonna create financial freedom a lot faster for you? More than likely not. So your emotional intelligence, aka your state, is so important for you, and what I wanna do is I wanna break down exactly how to cultivate or create any state. I'm gonna give you that exact recipe, formula, or strategy for that, and then from there, I'm gonna help you understand how does that actually play in to financial freedom, and how can you actually use what we do today to be able to take that into your team, into your life, into your family's life, so that you can create success in all areas of life. All right, how's that sound? Good? Cool. All right, let's jump in. All right, so how do we create any emotional experience that we want? Well, what I would invite you guys to do is draw a fairly large triangle. Boom, we'll put one up here, right? And I was actually going through this with a client today and it was extremely powerful for them. And so I wanted to share that with you because I realized how powerful it actually is. And then actually when I was at the gym, another client called me and just said, hey, I wanna thank you for walking me through this. It made a huge difference in my life and in my business. So I was like, gosh, I gotta get it out to you guys. So here we are. So the first pillar on how to create any emotional experience is your physiology. Okay, your physiology. Now, there's a great video out there. It's a TED Talk by a woman named Amy Cuddy, and it's called Power Poses. She's a Harvard grad who studies the power of physiology and the effects that it has on the body. That's great and that's awesome, but how does that help you create financial freedom? I'll show you here in a second. But you need to understand that your physiology plays a major role in how you feel. Okay, so with that being said, I'm gonna give you a quick little example. So what is our physiology? It's made up of our body, our, our movements, our uh, mannerisms, our facial expressions, right? The way we move our body, our breathing is also part of our physiology, all right? So certain breathing techniques is important, right? If you're constantly breathing in and out really quickly. <laughs> you're going to get a lot more energy, right? You're gonna be out of breath, but if you take slow, deep breaths, you're going to start to relax more. That's our physiology. With that, what I wanna share with you is, let's pick an emotion that we would love to experience that if we experience this every day, we would actually have a better chance of creating financial freedom and or being the way we need to be for that day, week or month or year, all right? So I always like confidence. I don't think you can go wrong with confidence. I don't think you could be too confident, right? Because we're in a world that's ever changing, things are changing, technology's changing, the laws are changing. And so for you to be confident in that winter season when challenges come, that's extremely valuable. So let's use the emotion of confidence throughout this example of creating an emotional experience, okay? So think about this. I'd like you to think of a moment, a specific moment where you felt extremely confident. If you want, you can close your eyes. 
Think of that exact moment where you felt confident. And what I'd like you to do is, with your eyes closed, I'd like you to go back into that moment, looking through your own eyes, and I'd like you to see what you saw, hear what you heard, feel all the feelings of feeling confident in that moment. And what I'd like you to do is just scan your body and notice how you're standing or how you're sitting, okay? Now why this is important is because I want you to know that you use your body in a particular way that allows you to feel confident. You can open your eyes if you haven't already. Hopefully you're not doing this while driving either. That wouldn't be good, right? But we all have our body. We use it in a certain way. For me, I know when I want to feel confident, if you said, hey, get confident right now, I'd be like this and you just saw a slight movement. My chest went up, shoulders went back, heads up, I'm breathing deep, right? I'm, and even though I'm sitting here, like I'm sitting more erect than if I was slouching. And so what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to capture, how do you, how do you handle your body? What do you do with your body that allows you to feel confident, okay? I, it's important to capture. So one thing I like to do is, I like to take people through an exercise. So the first one is, I have them slouch down in their chair, cross their arms, and you can do this with me. Drop your chin to your chest, and I say, don't move, okay? Just sit there, don't move. And what I'd like you to do without moving, is I'd like you to get happy and excited. Happy and excited, happy and excited, excited, happy, excited, and happy. Okay, tell me, do you truly, if you went through this exercise, do you truly feel happy and excited? Not at all, right? And so, clients kind of like, oh, I get that, right? Like I, I totally, I didn't feel that way. So then I have people, you know, kind of lean back, stick their hands back, put their feet up on their desk, smile and freeze. Now try to get sad and depressed, sad and depressed, depressed and sad, depressed and sad. Can you do it? You could stay here if you'd like, or you can come back and I'm gonna come back to you. But no, you can't do it, why? Because physiologically, our bodies, when moved in certain positions, actually release biochemicals that cause you to feel a certain way. And so the biggest thing that you can do, if you really need to change your state in a moment, maybe you're giving a presentation, maybe you're having a negotiation and you catch yourself a little bit in fear or doubt and you need to feel confident on the phone, you could sit there and you might be like this and all defeated. You could just sit up more confidently and you'll start to feel different, right? You'll feel different. Why? Your physiology is a big component. When it comes to communication, your physiology, your body language is 55% of communication. That's huge. That's powerful. So it's so important to make sure that if you're going to show up in a confident state or any state for that matter, you're looking to your physiology first and especially your breathing patterns. Does that make sense? All right, number two is, we're on that left-hand side of that triangle. You could put focus slash belief. Focus slash belief. How many of you ever heard the term where focus goes, energy flows? And yes, that's very true, but another way of saying it is what you focus on, you feel. And so I like to you know kind of walk people through a little exercise before we dive in. And so I'd like you to real quick close your eyes and I'd like you just to think of a moment when you were a younger, when you had your favorite childhood pet. And I'd like you to think about the moment your childhood pet passed away. You found out they were gone. And just notice what emotions come up for you. Okay? If, you're, if you have your eyes closed, open your eyes and close your eyes again. Now, I'd like you to think of a moment, focus on a moment where you actually won something. You celebrated, you were excited, you took first place or you won a contest, something in your life that you were victorious in. And notice how you feel in that moment. Okay, you can open your eyes. And did you feel different? You didn't change any external situation. You, you didn't make more money. You didn't change your physiology. You were just sitting there with your eyes closed and you felt two different experiences of an emotion. And so what that's doing is when you change your focus, you start to feel different, right? When you shift your focus on something, you feel different. Also, your beliefs play a major role in how you feel. If you believe, if you truly believe that there's always a way and you come against a hard situation, a challenge, an obstacle in your business, how are you going to feel? you're going to feel more confident than maybe if you believe that there's no way to get through this. If you truly believe there's no way to get through this, you're gonna feel defeated, lost, doubtful.
But if you believe there's always a way, you're gonna feel confident, hopeful, certain. That leads to two different actions, which lead to two different results. So what you believe is so important. That's why a lot of people come to me or my team, the coaches on my team, to actually get through a lot of the limiting beliefs that are holding them back. Why? Because when you live in fear, doubt, or uncertainty, it's impossible to feel confident. You can't feel two emotions at the same time. Your nervous system can't do it. It's like driving, putting a car in reverse and driving all at the same time. You can't do it, it's one or the other. And so it's important that if you're gonna feel confident, you gotta be able to focus on the things that are gonna allow you to feel confident and believe the things that you need to believe in order to get to where you wanna go. Those limiting beliefs I've seen take people out all the time in business. They're right around the corner, they're right there. You just gotta break through this belief and they hold on to it like they own that thing, like it's a part of them, like there's a reward for having a limiting belief. And I'm here to tell you that when you can work through them, that's why it's so powerful to have a coach. And if you need one, reach out because we'd love to support you. And when you shift your beliefs, you have, it's like the handcuffs come off you start to feel different about where you're going or what you're doing or your path or your journey that God's called you to be on. And all of a sudden you take different actions and you get different results. That's why we see people turn around. That's why I've had clients double their income just from one conversation. One decision for breaking through a limiting belief yielded them making three, another client $300,000 a month passively. And so it, it really helps when you work on them. So, if you wanted to experience confidence, I'd like you to write down what would you need to focus on or what would you need to believe in order to feel confident? Okay, take a moment, write that down, maybe hit the pause button. It's really important that you do this because this is the second step or second key in the formula for you to be able to create any emotional experience you want, okay? All right, let's say you've already knocked that out. Let's move on to the third one and the third one is language and meaning. And these are really powerful and important because your language plays a major role in how you feel. Have you ever caught yourself saying, oh, I'm so frustrated right now. You feel different if you say frustrated than if you sit there and say, oh, I'm feeling a little flabbergasted. Like, what a silly word, right? Like, I feel the intensity just draining out of my body when I say that second one. It's so silly but and, and dumb. but. Your language plays a role, right? I have clients that says, hey, if someone walked up to you and said, hey, you know what, you're a badass. You feel a certain way, then if someone said, hey, you know what, you're a little bitch. Just changing one word makes a huge difference, right? And so the language that we use either external to ourselves, right? Like talking about ourselves or a situation or even to others, that makes a different experience for you than if you were to use a different language pattern. And that's not just external, it's also internal because how many of us actually, if we were to talk to other people the way we talk to ourselves and use the language that we use to ourselves, right? They wouldn't wanna be friends with you anymore, right? Because we also often have that self-talk, right? I'm dumb, I'm stupid, I, I don't know what I'm doing, I can't do this, I'm not good enough, right? All that self-talk, those, those language patterns play a huge role in how you feel. And then there's the other side, which is meaning. See, we're all meaning-making machines. Viktor Frankl wrote a great book called Man's Search for Meaning, and he talks about the meaning that we associate to our situation determines how we're going to feel and how we're gonna play out. See, when he was in the Holocaust, right, and people were dying left and right and barely had any food, he gave it a meaning that he needed to survive so that he could do something like, so that nothing like this ever happened again. He had a purpose behind what he needed to do while in the concentration camps to survive because there's meaning to his life. So the meaning that we give dictates how we feel, right? If a loved one passes away, we can either give it a meaning of, oh my gosh, I'm lost, I never can survive without this person again, or it could mean that they were so influential in my life, I'm gonna honor them by going out there and showing them what I can do in conquering this world, conquering the goals that I have to honor them, right? There's a different meaning associated, okay? So language and meaning is the third pillar. So I would write down what's some of the language patterns that you use, either internal or external, when you wanna feel confident, or the meanings that you give situations. 
For me, it's like, I got this. I know exactly what to do. Nothing can stop me, right? I'm unstoppable. Those are language patterns that if I want to feel confident, I say that to myself over and over, either out loud or internal, I feel more confident, right? Just shifting that. So go ahead and write that down for you right now. All right, so I just gave you the formula on how to create any emotional experience that you want. When you put all three of these together and you consciously do that, all of a sudden you start to feel different than what you possibly could. You're not living in reaction, you're living at cause. You're not living at the effect, you're living at cause, right? And so we wanna make sure that you are using this formula on a daily basis. I actually have my clients shift into their physiology of confidence, focus on what makes them feel confident, say what they need to say to feel more confident. And literally that happens in anywhere from two to five seconds. You could literally do that over and over and over and over again. Right? So I literally have a habit for clients and myself. I'll, I'll shift my confidence or my uh, physiology. I'll shift my focus and the language. That takes me about five seconds. And then I take a step back. I shake my body out to reset my nervous system. Why do I do that? Because I want to condition my nervous system to experience confidence over and over and over because we all have an emotional home, right? We all have a state that we tend to go to naturally. Right, and why? It's because you've conditioned it to be that way. And so you might be angry. Sometimes people are just, you know, flat out angry and they go to anger normally. They go to happiness or playfulness or joy or sadness. We all have an emotional home. So what do you want your emotional home to be? And so I take a step forward, I shift my physiology and I repeat that 10, 20, 30 times. And it takes two to five seconds to do, shake my body out, do it again, right? And all of a sudden, you start conditioning yourself to be more confident. That is a simple formula, strategy, plan on how to create any emotional experience. Now, how does this help you on the path of financial freedom? I've talked about this a little bit, but let's just say you had to make cold calls, right? You're on the path to real estate, whether it's you know calling brokers, calling agents, calling homeowners. And every day, right before you sit down, you sit at your desk, you grab your phone, and you're about to call that first number and you just feel fearful. Are you gonna take the action? More than likely not. And then you'll find yourself distracted by something else or you'll justify a story in your head on what you need to do and you forgot. And all of a sudden, you won't make the call. Okay, one day, no calls, no big deal. Three days later, you still haven't done the same thing because of fear. The end of the week, you haven't done it. The end of the month, you haven't done it. The end of the year, you haven't made those phone calls, all because you're living in a state of fear. Do you think that's gonna change your financial future? No, it's not gonna enhance it. If anything, it might destroy it. At best, maintain it. Now, what happens if you go to pick up that phone, you feel fear, and you're noticing, oh, I'm feeling fearful. Okay, but I don't have to stay here. I can change my state. And so all of a sudden, you stand up, right? And I'm not gonna stand up because the camera's at a certain angle, but you stand up, you shake your body out, and you're like, I'm gonna, I'm, I need to be confident. I gotta make confident calls moving forward. And you shifted your physiology, focus on that time or two, you started telling yourself the language pattern, right? You're giving it an empowered meaning, and you pick up the phone, and you're like, you know what, I got this. And you call the first person. And they're like, hey, you know what, thanks for calling, I'm a little bit, you know, I'm looking to sell maybe in like six months, or I'd be open to offers in six months. Can you call me then? And you're like, wow, that wasn't too bad. All right, let's go, let's move on. And now your brain has a reference of you feeling confident, but also getting a good outcome. Or even if they said no, you're like, okay, I'll move on to the next one, next one. And after about 10, 20 calls, you start getting some leads. Notice what that's gonna do to your confidence. That's gonna accelerate that. Now that's an external confidence versus an internal confidence. And so that's just as good, you know, if you need that, that's just as good. You know, we wanna start with the internal confidence and then the external is a result of your internal confidence. I had a client, I tasked him the other week to make some calls. He made 10 calls in one day, one person hired him. That's a 10% closing percentage just in that small sample size, right? Another, you know, you times that by 10, all of a sudden, guess what? They just made thousands of dollars just by putting in those calls. Why? Because they're in a confident state. So if you were to feel confident, make those calls, get those deals, create cash flow that allows you to surpass over time, over weeks, months, or years, that allows you 
to surpass your expenses, you now created financial freedom. A lot of times people know what to do. They know that they need to make the phone call. They know that they gotta call these brokers, these homeowners to create financial freedom, right? But they don't because they allow their emotional state to hold them back. The fear, the doubt, the hopelessness. But we now have given you a formula on how do you transfer that? How do you shift that? How do you change your state so that you can feel confident to do the things that you know you need to do so you can get the results that you want so you can create financial freedom? I know it's, it seems small. I know it seems minute. And I know it seems simple. And I always tell clients it's so simple to do, but yet it's so simple not to do. It's entirely up to you whether or not you take action on this. But I will tell you, you practice this for three days and you're conscious of it. Set an alarm every day for an hour, every hour on the hour. Check in on your state. Shift your state to feeling confident or whatever emotional state you want. Powerful, playful, hungry, passionate. doesn't matter. And I mean hungry not as in eating, as in like I want to get after this, right? You do that, notice at the end of three days how you feel. Notice the actions you, were, you wouldn't take normally and how you've taken them. And notice the results that you got from taking those actions that you normally wouldn't do because you changed your state. I'm telling you, this is a game changer. There's people around the world like Amy Cuddy and so many others that teach this all the time. I'm not teaching you anything new. Hear me out. This is nothing new. It's been around for decades and actually centuries. Just some people are now putting, you know, science behind a lot of it. Although people have known it for, you know, decades and centuries. So what you want to do is you want to practice this. You want to implement this. And I will tell you, by doing it, things that it's changed in my life is making those calls, calling people out in coaching calls when I didn't want to, for them to be like, oh my gosh, I changed my life. Thank you for that. I would be fearful to call people out in the beginning of my coaching journey. Now I have no problem with it because I actually love it. I have fun calling people out on their BS or limiting beliefs and where they're not playing full out or playing at that next level. So, But it can make a huge difference. And that, because of that confidence, Here's a little testimony. Because of that confidence, people re-enrolled with me. They continued their coaching once their co client agreement was up. That meant more money for me, which meant doing that with multiple clients, dozens of clients throughout the year, means more money to invest, which allowed me to invest into things like startup companies, short-term rentals, crypto, right? Putting money in crypto, although sometimes that's passive if you have bots or not, but not always, right? And, you know, that fluctuates, that's very volatile, but you know, it's allowed me to create another level of wealth and invest the way I want to invest and go to that next level. All right, guys, if you found value in this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, share it to people. Most importantly, comment below and subscribe. Put on that notification bell. It's important that as our channel grows here that you get notified anytime a video comes out because it might just be a video that you need to unlock something to go to that next level to create financial freedom for you and remember here at master life by design financial freedom is not the end destination it's actually the starting point of it's where you start really living so with that comment below what was your biggest takeaway I'd love to hear it. how has it changed your life Love to hear in the comments below. So with that, guys, thanks for tuning in. Joe Moffitt with Master Life by Design. Have a great one. See you guys.